this is uh, you know the, the the second webinar of four uh, webinars in total, each focusing on one particular aspect of the program. Okay. Um, before we move to the theme of today, um, just a few words uh, about you know the, the process. Um, of course, I mean these four webinars cover uh, you know different themes and different topics. Okay, but of course you don't need to to wait until uh, you know all the four webinars are covered in order to apply. Right, this is a rolling application process, and so our admission team will look at your application as soon as possible, as soon as it's received. And, uh, and set up an interview if, if needed. Um, this means, of course, that you can have a faster response and almost you know, kind of immediate notification about whether something is missing in your documents or maybe there are some, some uh, action that you have to take. For example, if you, take, if you receive a conditional offer, right? And so the more time there is, the more time you, are, you have to, to comply with this, with this request if uh, needed. So my suggestion is that you, do, you know, if you intend to apply, then do not leave, uh, leave it to the last minute um, and, and apply as soon as, as, as you feel uh, comfortable to do so, okay? Um, in the first webinar, uh, you know, I tried to give you really some insight into the, you know, the main features of the program and particularly into who might you know might benefit from the program itself okay so that was the main the main idea of the of the first uh, webinar right in the second webinar uh, you know as i mentioned in uh, in the first uh, encounter we will focus on the three pillars that compose our own program right so you have already seen uh, this, this picture this figure when we, you know, we said there are these three different uh, pillars of the program, the academic side, the practical application, and the peer community engagement, okay? And so today we'll, uh, we will concentrate on the academic pillar, right? Um, and so we will discuss in particular whether our academic program is the right choice for you by basically focusing on two aspects of the academic program, you know? So what we teach, what kind of content, right? whether the content is right for you. And secondly, also how we teach it, okay? So we hope that we will give you some insights into the, you know, the value of our program, our teaching, and whether this is, uh, this is the right choice for you, okay? And finally, we will uh, close uh, you know, the, the day with the Q&A uh, session, okay? So all of this should take about 30 minutes. The first 20 minutes I will go through the, uh, you know, through the academic program, and then we will have some time to, to interact with each other, okay? Right. Um, so first of all, let me give you an overview. Let me walk you through the, the program itself. As you know, this is a two-year program, um, and uh, you are asked basically to, or to pass 13 modules and a major project, right? Um, the 13 modules basically uh, you know, comprise all eight core modules plus five electives, okay? And uh, seven core modules uh, you know, take place in year one. You can see here, you know, the, in the Michael Mass term, you have four core modules. And then in the learn term, three core modules, right? And, the, and number eight of the core modules will take place instead at the beginning of year two. Uh, it's, it's about research methods and the reason why it's placed there that is necessary to prepare you to go to the major project, uh, which will take place in the second part of the year two, okay? Um, um, the one thing that I would like to say about this, uh, you know, the way this is structured is that, of course, the, you can see that there are three residentials in year one and one residential in, in year two. Residentials basically have you know, various purposes and we will discuss uh, you know, in detail also when we talk about the, the other uh, pillars of the, of, of the academic program. Um, but um, among this, this, uh, this uh, the reason why we have this residential is the fact that some of the academic content is also uh, delivered during the residentials, okay? And so for example, if you take the first September residential, 
you will have a number of activities um, in September, but also there will, uh, there will be faculty members that start the, the core modules that you have in Michael Mass term. And so they will open the course with the, with the, uh, you know, during the residential. And then for the land course, for example, the, the three core modules in the land uh, term, then you will, uh, you will receive uh, you know, an input of delivery by the faculty members during the March residential, where the faculty members will close up basically the, the, the courses. And, and, and of course, in some residential, you will have the opening of the course for the next term and the closing of the courses in the previous term, okay? And this will, will go on, of course, until uh, June, which is the last residential of, of year one. Then you will have uh, uh, the second round of electives uh, right after the June residential. And then you will start the Michael Mass term with the core research uh, module, okay? So this is more or less how um, it is organized. So uh, core modules, first and second term, electives, uh, in two rounds, uh, one after the March residential and one after the June residential, okay? Um, in terms of uh, what kind of academic content we deliver. So, you know, our purpose is to provide a very academically rigorous kind of uh, curriculum, right? And so we cover a wide range of topics through our core and elective modules. And this is, uh, you know, uh, year one, basically. And uh, as you can see that the seven modules, uh, uh, core modules in Michael Mass and Lantern uh, cover, you know, kind of fundamental, our core uh, topics uh, and disciplines from kind of strategy, opportunism, business model to organizational behavior and negotiation. And of course, uh, finance and system thinking. So um, this is, um, uh, you know, quite fundamental kind of uh, uh, topics and, and uh, you know, you will be equipped with, uh, you know, the basics of these um, fundamental topics through our core modules, okay? Um, so uh, seven in total during the first year in terms of core modules. And then you will be called to, to select uh, and take five elective modu modules out of 11. And these, of course, you can decide which, which electives to take, but these are distributed in two rounds, right? As I said, after March residential, after June residential. Um, um, typically, uh, you know, people tend to take three and two or vice versa you know, kind of uh, electives during the, uh, the two rounds. And the reason of course is that, uh, you know, it's quite demanding. There's a lot of uh, material that is delivered. And so to keep up with the with electives, it takes, uh, you know, a uh, big commitment, okay? Uh, next year, we will have five electives in, uh, in the Easter term. So in the first round, and then we will have six elective in the second round, okay? Um, so as you can see, this is a quite of a demanding academic program. Um, and someone could ask, you know, why I am forced to take all these core modules that cover, you know, wide range of subjects uh, from strategy to negotiation. So why is the case? Do we really need to know this stuff in order to become entrepreneur? I mean, last webinar, during the last webinar, I already said, you know, you don't certainly need to take a master to become an entrepreneur. I already said that and we discussed the reasons why. However, if you decide to do so, I think we believe that a master program should uh, equip you with a, with a rounded, complete set of skills and knowledge, right? This is because indeed an entrepreneur plays very different roles and need a very diverse set of skills, okay? So I like to, to think about this in terms of hats, right? So an entrepreneur is someone who has to wear very different hats, it depends on the situation, okay? So if you think about it, so we have the entrepreneur, what kind of skills he needs? Um, certainly he plays a pioneer kind of role, right? He's someone who has to explore kind of new territories, create, 
uncontested markets or even industry, is someone that has to understand you know, whether there are unmet customer needs or even sometimes to create and educate the customers towards this new need, need that they might not even know to having. So in a sense, it's someone who has to be an innovator and someone who has to look at you know, opportunities. You know, sometimes opportunities out there, kind of arbitrage opportunity to be seen and exploited, sometimes it's even more. Opportunities are created by the entrepreneur themselves uh, through their own action, okay? So this, we call them transformative opportunities, right? So innovation skills that's, you know, uh, need, uh, are needed for, for this kind of role. But of course, uh, an entrepreneur has also an intelligence role, you know, uh, in a sense is a strategist, is someone who has to analyze the external environment, understand how the competitive landscape is. Um, so by gathering intelligence on competitors, on technology, on market trends, right? And so he has to understand the external environment, but also, yes, you know, they have to understand the internal environment. So which kind of resources and capabilities, uh, you know, I own or I need to buy from the market, right? To serve um, a certain purpose, maybe to position myself in a certain way in the competitive landscape. So it really needs to be a creative analyst that is able to gather and process information and formulate a strategy, right? But also it has to be a trader, right? He has to, to have serious administrative skills. So you need to be able to, to act as a manager, a controller. So build in practice a profitable kind of operation. So you have to control the expenses, you know, manage the pricing, make decisions like, you know, what, what to make internally, what to buy from the market, what, what to automate or hire, what kind of quantity or to order, how to sort the resources and so on. So you really need to also master administrative skills, right? And finally, I think you have also a quarterback role, right? So you need to, to make decisions about staffing. So you want to create your perfect team, right? And so you have to make a lot of decisions that have to, to do with HR type of, of problems. You have to motivate your team to achieve some results. You need to maintain the drive, the entrepreneurship spirit in the organization. Maybe you have to negotiate or resolve internal conflicts or, or even externals, communicate effectively you know, with the various stakeholders that might be important for you. So you really need to have some kind of people skills that come from becoming an organizational leader, right? So, I mean, if you like, think about, as I said, the creation of a team. So, of course, you know, we all know that to have, you know, a good team increases your chances to, you know, to, to have success or, you know, or beat the competition somehow. But the problem is how you assemble this thing, right? And of course, it's not just a solution of, you know, recruiting people with a specific talent um, in the vacuum. You need to make a lot of decisions to do so. You need to have a very clear idea what strategic opportunity you want to pursue, right? And which resources you might need. So which kind of talents or people you want to hire, you know, to serve that precise strategic opportunities that you want to pursue. You have to decide when to buy these resources, so to speak, from the market and when to develop these resources internally, right? So maybe, you know, you, you can train you know, your own people in order to develop some skills that are needed to pursue that strategic opportunity. Of course, you know, to, call, to hire people, you need to, to manage your own finance, understand how, how much resources you want to allocate to, to hire some people as opposed to others, right? And, and if you are like most, uh, you know, startups, maybe you don't have much resources to allocate in that sense. So you will not be able to hire this talent just offering the higher level of salary, right? But you need to be able maybe to attract them in a different way. So you need to communicate your own vision, your own uh, you know, idea about where you're going with your company, right? Um, you have to tell a story about you know, where you come from and where you are going and be able to communicate with them effectively and convince them to join the, the company. 
And once they are in, you know, of course you have to motivate them. You have to lead them to, to be able to, to, to pursue your own objectives. So in essence, even the recruitment of talent touches on all the kind of core subjects that we have. It's a matter of finance with the salaries, is a matter of OB and negotiation with leadership and motivation. It's about marketing, telling your own story, your own vision. It's about strategy, identifying which strategic opportunity you want to, to develop and which kind of resources you need, okay? So this is why, in a sense, we offer you know, all these core modules, right? Which are essential for you to master all these skills. Um, Someone could say, well, I mean, you don't need, I don't need to, to be you know, good at everything, right? And I agree. So maybe there will be cases where you have to delegate. Maybe you have people that are in charge of uh, you know, some roles, right? But still, even to just make that kind of decision, you need to master the skills, right? And decide to whom you know, delegate these kind of activities. So in any case, you need to have a broad understanding of everything that is required to be a successful entrepreneur. Um, at least this is, uh, this is my view, okay? Um, so, um, of course, the, 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 the core modules, you know, focus on a particular aspect, but they interact with each other. You know? So if you think about, for example, strategy, I teach strategy, right? I teach strategy, but part of my strategy course is about you know, judgment and strategy decision-making, which of course touches on, on, on topics that sometimes are discussed in OB, right? And so these kind of core modules interact with each other to provide you with, uh, with the most comprehensive you know, understanding of entrepreneurship, okay? Um, all right, so, uh, these are the core modules and, and, and they speak to this kind of rules that we just described. But of course, then you have the electives, right? And through the electives, you can kind of create, in a sense, your own journey, right? You, as I said, you can choose five out of 11 electives and create your own path, okay? However, if you like, there are some basic themes that you know, we have identified that might be of interest, okay? So for instance, we have a, a general team which is about making strategic choices, okay? So if you think about, you know, this kind of uh, four electives, assessing and managing external constraints and leveraging big data analysis and management, these two I would say are strategic in the sense that provide you the tool to do some intelligence, right? So it's about gathering and processing information. So for example, the first module gives you a very good understanding of the external environment. So you look at the technological advancements, you know, things like climate change, uh, political uncertainty, economic changes, and so on. And so it puts you in a good situation to understand what are the consequences of these changes for your uh, venture. Okay. The second one, look at the key concept in big data analysis, you know, about customers, employees, service users, and give you the tools to be able to get the, the most out of the data that are available. So in a sense, they are strategic because make you, you know, make the best use of, of the information out there, okay? And how to process it. But also you can strategize by, by, you know, for example, look at intellectual property, uh, to form your IP strategy, okay? And so it's about understanding uh, intellectual property in the business and manage it in a way that can inform and deliver a commercial strategy effectively, okay? And also, of course, B2B marketing is strategic in the sense that give you the strategy for B2B marketing, which, you know, the customers of a company is another business in, instead of regular kind of consumers. So in a sense, these four, if you like, can be grouped under the, the team uh, strategic. Then there is a second group that I would call it developing, okay? So these two modules, um, concept and prototypes and effective experimentation and pivoting are basically about, you know, get things done. 
So they want to, to do, to teach you in practice, you know, how to build a product or service to meet the needs of the customer, right? So typically when we see, uh, you know, a well-designed product or someone who has been able to, you know, to create a, a market, um, we always think, oh, it must have had a, a perfect vision. So envision the product to serve the particular kind of customers and satisfy a need. But of course, it's never about plan A, you know. So there is the generation phase where you try to come with concept, with solution, right? But then there is an interactive process in which you are experimenting, you know, first internally, then with the customer. And these are interactive process that lead you finally maybe to develop something that has um, great value for the customers. So these two, um, Modules, in a sense, uh, you know, move from the creation of novel and useful solution to how systematically iterate from plan A to a plan that eventually work before you running out of resources. Okay, so this is I would put them in this second kind of uh, group. Then there is a third group that is about really scaling and growth, right? And so this comprises three modules. You know, the first one look at how to manage internal cost, you know, and provide a very comprehensive critical examination of, uh, of early growth in any entrepreneurial business, right? And then you move to raising finance where, you know, you, you, you deal with all the tasks that you have to go through in order to, uh, to raise uh, external finance to fuel growth, right? And this includes, for example, developing skills in terms of pitching, right? And finally, you have the managing growth uh, module, which provide you with tools and frameworks that enable you to, to make very well-informed decisions on how to manage the growth of your venture, right? And you will do it in a, in a, in a very applied way, going through an example, uh, which is typically your own venture, as a unit of analysis to work uh, through, the, through, through these tools and framework. And finally, the last theme, if you like, I called it purpose, right? So, I mean, over the last uh, few years, I've become more and more clear that profit and purpose are no longer two opposing goals, in a sense, right? And so to keep in line with, with the, the evolution, you know, what I could call the purpose revolution that we have seen, that we are seeing at the moment, uh, you know, these two kind of modules provide you with a, with a number of tools uh, to help you, of course, to be you know, successful, even from a profit perspective, but also to manage, you know, to give meaning to your success and to contribute to build a better future for everybody, okay? And so these courses will touch on issues like ethics, diversity, sustainability, social innovation, and so on, okay? Of course, as I said, you can create your own path. So these are just, you know, broad themes that you know we have identified in our program but then you can uh, you can pick and choose okay right so um so this is an overview a very quick an overview of of the uh, the principles that inform our own uh, um teaching in terms of content but how do we develop this okay so i want to say something about our teaching philosophy right so you might know the old saying for a person with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, right? And uh, you know, and that's the case for many. But of course, what is the problem is a screw. Then you might need a different tool, right? You might need a screwdriver. And in general, of course, you know, there are different tools that you can use that might fit or not with the problem at hand, right? And uh, the bottom line is that, of course, uh, you know, in terms of our teaching philosophy, you cannot be exposed only to one theory, one frame, one tool, one approach, and you know, believe that this will will you know will solve clearly a particular problem, right? So what you need is a toolbox, and a toolbox from which you can pick and choose your own tool, and and see whether that tool fits with the problem at hand. Okay. So, I mean, if you want to think about it in terms of, uh, you know, business example, I mean, sometimes I look at books and articles, especially when I'm in the airport, about, you know, business, uh, business books, right? And then you, you find uh, instances of this hammer problem 
when you, when you look at these books, right? So for example, in organizational behavior, you know, the managing of people, you know, I read books or articles when they say, well, you know, there are big statements like the three key essential qualities of leadership, the five fundamental steps to motivate employees, right? And so on. I mean, honestly, I think this is this is rubbish, right? So there is, you know, people management are very difficult, you know, are fuzzy, complicated, uh, ill-defined, there are multiple angles. And there is no one single, you know, set of steps that you can take and, and you know, and, and do it uh, best, right? So there's no one recipe that's, uh, you know, is fundamental to lead or motivate. There are many different ways of doing so. The same if with the entrepreneurship. I'm sure that many of you have, you know, are familiar with book like The Lean Startup, right? And, you know, which ambitiously claim, and I'm quoting here, to provide a comprehensive theory of entrepreneurship. But is it correct? Is there just one theory that can provide a comprehensive approach? I mean, no doubt it has kind of some virtues as a, as a theory, but of course there are clear limitations. You know, for, this, for instance, it works quite well when you are dealing with the kind of incremental type of innovation, but it does a little bit less well when you're thinking about you know, creating a radically new product or even a market. So what I'm trying to say is that you know, every kind of tool or framework or approach has some virtues, but it's all about understanding the boundary conditions under which condition this tool is appropriate to solve this problem, okay? And so our idea is that we provide a, a variety of tools, right? Um, and uh, so we look at the problem from different angles. We expose you to a variety of perspective, approaches, technique, so that when you meet the screw, you have the screwdriver, right? So the more tools you have at your disposal, the, the higher is the probability will be able to solve that problem. And of course, some tools can be also applied uh, to deal with other problems. So it could be that you have a tool that is multiple purpose in a sense, okay? So it's, it's about understanding this. Right, and how we, we delivered this? You know, we already said during the first webinar that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, the, the material will be delivered online and there will be video, text, uh, small group exercises, webinars and so on. But of course, uh, and this is go back to the value of the residential that I mentioned at the beginning. We do much more. We we tackle the problem from very different uh, angle using very different uh, teaching kind of approaches. For example, we, we use uh, case studies. We use simulation. We use self-assessment tools, exercises, surveys, video clips, and so on. And and so, in addition to this a lot of discussion and dialogue that happens on forums, in the webinar, in the residential. You know, we take the view as a philosophy that uh, learning should be experiential and, and you know, participant-centered. And so we want you to, to uh, engage with, with the faculty, engage with your peers, and integrate your work experience, opinions, and views in the, in the, um, in the program. Right. Um, a last word about our own faculty teaching. I said, you know, there are tools um, and frameworks out there, but there are a lot of tools and frameworks that we bring to the class ourselves. You know, the, the, you know, we we tend to to have a teaching uh, that is informed by our own research, right? And so we 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 tend to to bring to the table our own uh, experiences as a researcher and. Um, you know, to provide, to enlarge it, the set of tools that you have, you know. Of course, uh, you know, it was the British statistician, George Box, who said that all models are wrong, but some are useful. Uh, these apply to us as well, but we hope that our framework will add some good tools to your toolbox. And so it will be, it will be eventually useful. All right. Um, I guess this is uh, all I wanted to say about the academic side of the program um, and how it could contribute to your journey as an entrepreneur. Um, if you have uh, questions that you want to discuss, of course, with, for example, our ambassadors, uh, you can see the link below and, and visit our ambassador platform. 
And of course, they will be happy to chat with you and share their own experience. One thing that I would say, you know, as, a, as to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, all our ambassadors are very busy entrepreneurs and that volunteer to share their own experience by, you know, using their precious time. So I suggest that, you know, if you want to interact with them, you, you contact one, you know, maximum two and try to engage in a very kind of, uh, you know, in-depth conversation, right? Uh, so be, uh, you know, mindful about their time as well. And of course, if you have other kind of uh, specific questions, um, you know, you can contact the team um, who will be best, you know, team member will be best posi position to, to provide an answer to your question. So in the meantime, uh, if you have any questions for me, um, I'm happy to, to try to answer them. Thank you.